Question 18. Rana wants to estimate the number of balls in a bag. I don't know why. Um, so right, so on Monday she removes 120 balls and she marks on each ball. She then puts all 120 back in the bag. On Tuesday, she removes 20 balls from the bag and eight of these balls are marked. Work out an estimate of the total number of balls in the bag. Right, so proportionally, eight out of 20 had marks on them. So if we use equivalent fractions, we know she marked 120 in her original sample. So this, these should be in the same proportion as these. So actually, if we did 120 divided by 8, which is 15, so we've done 8 times 15 is 120. 20 times 15 is 300. So actually, because they're in the same proportion, there were 300 balls in total. Now, what assumptions have we made? Well, the sample is random. We've also, um, that we haven't lost any. And they're in the same proportion, well, they would be in the same proportion if, if this was correct. Okay, so four marks, quite nice for four marks. Right, unlike the next question. Question 19. Where n is, so we've got m is equal to 8 times 10 to the 9n, where n is an integer, so a whole number. Express m to the minus one third in standard form. Wow. So, m to the minus third. Well, because it's a minus, what we can do is we can actually. 1 over, that gets rid of the minus, the third is the cube root. So basically we have got that as a starting point. Now obviously that's not in its simplest form. So let's break it down a bit more. We know the cube root of 8 is half. And if we were to cube root this... In other words, if we did 10, 3n times 10, 3n times 10, 3n, we'd have 10, 9n. So we can actually just divide the power by 3. Gives us 1 over 10, 3n. Okay, now we can put it all back up on the, because they want it in standard form. Let's put it back up so we're not 1 over so we've got 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3n okay but we're still not in standard form because this is 0 0.5 we need it 5 so it's 5 times 10 to the minus 3n minus 1 okay and that would get it back to 0 0.5 so we need that minus 1 there quite a complicated question there so we've done, dealt with the minus, 1 over, the cube root, worked out the cube root of each bit, then put it back into standard form. Right, last question. So, let's have a look, a lot of information. Six coins, uh, five, two tens, three twenties, takes a random coin from his pocket, he records its value and puts it back. That's quite important. He then takes the second coin from his pocket. Calc the prob the, sorry, calculate the probability that he takes two 20 cent coins. Well, the probability he takes one, three over six, he puts it back, so actually the second probability doesn't change, which gives us a nine over 36, or a quarter. Well, that's quite easy for the last question, wasn't it? Now, calculate the probability that the second coin he takes has a higher value than the first coin he takes. So if he starts with a 5, well, the probability of getting a 5 is 1 out of 6. The, then the probability of getting a higher one is 5 out of 6. 
because it could be a 10 or a 20, couldn't it? So that gives us 5 over 36. If he starts with a 10, that'll be 2 over 6, because there's two of them. And then the probability of getting higher will be 3 over 6. So it's 6 over 36. So it's either that or that. Add them together. 11 over 36. So your final probability is that. Can't actually simplify it either.